Lois worked you pretty hard, but you've done a magnificent job. We've covered putting, chipping, chip and run, pitch and run, low shots, high shots, hooks, slices. All of these things have been covered in these two days. And you're controlling that with what? All the shots where you can't control the hands, right? Yeah. yeah. You're controlling your balance, you're controlling the plane. So when I come back here, nothing is on plane until I put it on plane. Right. Now, it doesn't go up that way, it doesn't go down that way, it comes up the way the shoulders are turning, the only oblique plane. Comes down this way, and most everybody's going around here with the shoulder, right shoulder high, it's got to be low, and the club come in here for the two sides of the swing to coincide. But if you go this way and come that way, they're not going to meet. The ends will never meet. And that's all established from the two-arm measurement at address. Yeah, that's one of the answers to that. Having the proper measurement from your shoulders, having the proper measurement from the body to allow your right thigh to come in between your left thigh underneath your arms. Mm -hmm. Now, the knee and the hip are pulling the right shoulder into the shot. We're not trying to force the right shoulder. It's a secondary force. It's not the primary. It's if we can take that part and use it, you can hit it so much faster. This shoulder is a rigid slowness. The way I'm telling you, or the way you're hitting it, which is beautifully done, I, I tell you, it's, it looks like a ballerina doing a job out there, you know? Well, I forgot my tutu, but I'll take that, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it is, it's as smooth as Mozart playing his special theme. Mm -hmm. It is right to the tempo, like you call a tempo of a beat. You're, now you're synchronized with other members of the band to that beat. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that to play golf. And you take off all the tension using that forward press. Now, you know, you have ne never hardly used that until this week, right? Right. We actually incorporated my uh, forward press today of this videotape. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's saying something because, you know, I've hit two or three million golf balls from, you know, like the two count position. Yeah. See, there's nothing wrong with that. It just makes a little step and stilt it. Mm -hmm. It takes that out. Under pressure, it's, sometimes it's hard to start a club smoothly and in synchronization. Yeah. From you a, know, static, from a position. static position. Yeah. But you can do it easily from a kinetic. Oh, yeah. And your sh I mean, like you say, your shoulders follow your body instead of lead them. Right. Anytime they get ahead of the hips, you got no shot. You got no plan. You got no blade control. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, of the shots that you've hit here for the past few, two days, they all have felt rather blended, regardless of is a soft shot or a full shot, right? Yeah, the same basic body movements apply to almost every shot that we hit, unless you're doing some sort of crazy trick. Yeah. Shot. Regardless of how long an arc we take, we're still taking the same tempo to do it, right? To hit the ball, yes. It, even though it's a half, you're just taking the same length as though it's full, right? Mm -hmm. There's three count. This thing, if you remember, you get your physics into the swing, your balance and your timing, right? Yeah. And, you know, we introduce kinesiology in here, and some people might say that this isn't important. Well, I'll tell you one thing. For accuracy and balance, this is as important as air is for you to breathe. Mm -hmm. That's how important it is. I agree with you. I, this, see, everything that we put into this tape, taken off electromyograph, I can attach the notice to these different muscles that's going to be in play, tell you when you started this, the call, call contraction, how long is in contraction, and the next muscle that goes into play right on through the swing. Mm -hmm. So we know what is happening. He's not guessing. See, all these years that we've had, there had not been the science that we are introducing on this tape. There's a lot of kinesiologists, but they're not dealing in golf. 90% of them dealing in running, chinning, swimming, things like that. You had one guy that 
made himself quite famous with George and uh, Mike Marshall, the University of Michigan. He, he incorporated that into baseball, but they haven't followed it. Baseball players look like a polywog trying to hit the ball. It's got no balance when he hit the ball. Mm -hmm. They have no support. That you'd be surprised how horrible some of them look. And they wonder why they're hitting 109 and 210 and things like that. If you ever looked at Babe Ruth hit a ball, he shifted. He didn't hang back on that left foot. He was a right, a left-handed hitter. He stepped up on top he of that. He stepped up on top of that leg, and his left side was free, and he knocks it out. And they couldn't understand how he's doing it because all the forces coming in toward the pitcher instead of coming away from the catcher. You understand? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've had the opportunity to perform probably with every, you know, major instructor and, you know, big tour player there is. And, and uh, you know, I personally have never seen anything quite like your teaching in the way that how exact emotion it is. And once it becomes, once you, you know, synchronize all the individual parts, which it takes a lot of work and understanding. Yes. But you're going against such a natural design. And, you know, the, the major points that I think that are brought out in this tape is is our dress position. You know, that two-arm measurement, I just, you know, you can't do anything if you're, if you're not lined up right or you don't have a starting position. You know, it's not square, square, square. And, and then secondly, there's a pivot. You know, the pivot, you know, your, your description of the pivot and what the hips and ankles and knee do and the sequence that they do really supply foundation if you incorporate that into your golf game, it is really hard to hit bad shots because the measurements are so exact. You may get a little quick. You may have some crazy thought come through your mind, you know, that causes the back. But I just can't believe how exact a measurement that it is. I, you know, when you have this way of hitting the ball, you never fear bounds. Never fear bounds. You never fear trouble. When you play a shot, you know, the best way to play a shot, if you've got trouble on the right, draw a line from the center of the fairway to the center of the green. Play the left side. If you've got trouble on the left, you play the right side instead of the center all the time. Everybody comes out there and try to hit it down the center. I cut it half in two and I use one half of the fairway mm -hmm. and cut back into the center or draw into the center. Understand? Mm -hmm. This cuts your, your troubles about 50 percent. So you won't do it line up like this, I've got to take it on my line. You don't. Here, you're giving yourself one, let's see, here's a half of fairway here, and then you go a half there. You got two thirds of a fairway to go at instead of a half. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, another thing too, at the risk of repeating myself, uh, you know, in the earlier introduction part, I talked about how I had the opportunity to play 50 rounds of golf with you and how you know, now I've, I swing at it pretty good sometimes, and you know, I've seen some of the best swings in the world. There has never been a golf swing, in my opinion, at least that I've seen with the efficiency in which you struck a golf ball. It was just unbelievable. And you know, there's a lot of effective swings. I always said the hardest thing about golf was keeping score. 